Hello everybody, this is David Arena. I work here at Go Engineer on the 3D scanning team. Today's going to be kind of an informal and brief look at working with long range scan data. I had a, been tasked to check out the communication between our tablet, our, our iPad, working with the Artec remote. Uh, that enables the system to be very portable and not uh, tethered to a computer. So here I've got three scans I'm going to import in. Also to kind of point out, usually with uh, 3D long range scan data, we can sample the data set as we bring it in. Uh, if you bring it in one to one, you're going to have a massive amount of data. And where it may not be necessary, it's kind of up to what you've scanned and I guess your preferences here. So I'm going to choose 1 16th of the data. That'll give me uh, plenty of data to work with. Also to point out, if these scans were in color, we can also bring in color information. These particular scans were not scanned with color. Also, typically with long range scan data, the units are going to be meters. So that's what these were. So I'm going to go ahead and actually import these three scans at one time. Go to import. So here we get this confirmation uh, dialog box, just kind of confirming the units. So we are working this session in inches. So it's just saying for meters, the unit uh, conversion here, is going to be uh, about 675 inches or so, the data, as far as the size goes. So I'll say, okay. And now we have basically three point clouds. If you look here on the left, you can see this little icon. So each one of these is a, is a point cloud. They're not meshes. So that's what this video is about, is working with point clouds. Uh, you don't need to mesh these scans necessarily. So I'll kind of talk about that in a second. I'm going to go ahead and align these. Uh, the first two scans are actually aligned because I didn't move the scanner. The third one, I moved the scanner. So we're going to go ahead and align the uh, data together. So I'll come up here and go to align scan data. And the reference are going to be the first two here. And the moving will be the third scan. And I'm going to say local based on pick point. Again, I'll have to pick the third scan. And now I have a split window and I can start to uh, look at how I'm going to align this together. So I'm looking over here. I'll flip this around. So this is actually my living room of my house. So I, like I said, I was tasked to check out the, the tablet with the remote, uh, kind of like a remote control, uh, so we don't have to use are tethered to the to the laptop. So here I'm just going to kind of pick out some common spots here. Uh, like I'll come up here and up here, and let's say I'll pick the corner towards the door on that first set of scans, and then I'll come down here. I'm looking for like a little features, like there's a little outlet right there, and I'll pick it right here as well. So we need a minimum of three points to do this. If you need more, uh, you can certainly do more, but three is the minimum. And it usually does a pretty good job. So I'm just going to pick another feature, something on this mantle here. I'll pick there and I'll zoom up in here, pick right about there. And I'm going to go ahead and apply this alignment. And after this is done, I'll go ahead and do a global and fine. That's just one more little alignment amongst all the data. In this case, we haven't aligned to a coordinate system yet. So I'm going to say all scans can move. So I'll say all point clown. And I'll say apply small transformation because it's close already. And I'll say I'll go ahead and apply that. And now we'll finally get a global and fine registration of all three scans together for this uh, for these data sets. So at this point, what I need to do next is basically combine this into one point cloud and then align it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that and come back and show you how we proceed with the modeling. So here I've combined and actually aligned the three point clouds into one. So now we have a single point cloud here. And if we go ahead and check on that, on the properties, we can see here that we're working with about three point, almost 3.9 million points in a single point cloud. So that's a lot of data. If you remember, I brought this in at 1 16th. So we're probably talking about 54, 55 million points if I brought the whole data set in, but I didn't need it to model. So I'm going to go ahead and also you can see this is actually the ceiling of the scans. So I'm going to clip the view a little bit so I can see inside of the room just by dragging this view clip. Now you can see my living room. Funny kind of thing about this actually is uh, I didn't realize how messy my living room was. We've got a little puppy and her little toys and stuff are all strewn around. 
and I should have picked up the room before I did the scans. But anyway, that's that's kind of a funny thing. Oh, hang on a second. Uh, someone's calling me. Oh, hi, AC. This is our puppy. Yes, I know. You've got a barking problem. Yeah, you know what? And I asked you to pick up your toys, and you never did. So anyway, I'm working right now. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Okay, back to the room. So as I mentioned before, um, you don't need to mesh this kind of data. The only time you would is if you're trying to use regions. Regions cannot be applied to point clouds. And if you've watched our other Geomagic Design X videos, you probably understand what the regions are. They basically classify certain areas, but those, those work on meshes. So if I needed to do something, uh, I would actually copy this or cut this out. For example, this is a, a flat table and I would triangulate it in the software and then I could apply a region to it to extract uh, reference information or uh, go to the model tab and do some quick primitive solids or surfaces. So, but in this case, everything's pretty planar as far as what I modeled. So I'm gonna kind of just roll back uh, just to show you what I did. I didn't model the whole thing. Um, I only took three scans if you remember, but I can go back to or the first sketch, go to a normal view uh, to that sketch. And you can see here that I'll turn off the point cloud. So this is the just really simple geometry I drew. So that would be just, again, if I just erase this for a second, and then the origin was kind of in the corner of the room. But at this point, it's just like working, it is like working with a mesh here. Even though it's called a mesh sketch, we are working with point cloud. So then again, it's up to me to decide where to extract this information from, like right there, and I'll pull this out. So this kind of modeling is really not different from what we've done before with the software. So. That's why it's going to be a real brief video. Um, there's nothing groundbreaking here. Just working with point cloud instead of, uh, instead of meshes. So that was my first sketch. I'll go ahead and actually just go ahead and hit exit out of the sketch and show you the first uh, 3D feature. So I actually created this as a surface extrusion. So let me roll back to that. And you can see here, if I turn on my surfaces, that one. So this is wall number one, for example, uh, of the room. And then I uh, thickened it as a solid, just to make a, a solid wall. So, and also the view clip is, is clipping the, the top of the, uh, of the ceiling there. That's why you see it as almost like you can see inside the walls, but it's a solid body. And I kind of did the same thing, uh, rolling forward here. That was my second wall. I thickened that, so that's my second wall. And then I just kind of picked a few features inside of the room to draw. Some of the easy ones, I didn't get on the upholstery, I didn't get a lot of data on that, so I couldn't really model the upholstery. But, so you can see here, this is kind of where I ended. So I did my, uh, my fireplace, little mantle here, there's a little cabinet, the front windows of the room with the blinds, and on this side, we've got some French doors in the back. I didn't model any of the mill work. But anyway, this is kind of just the workflow of working with point clouds. Um, pretty simple, straightforward. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.